We're back today with Bristow Middle School Math, right in the heart of the Mount Diablo Brentwood Valley. Our learning target is, how can you create pairs of equivalent ratios? Looking at that and going over that learning target again, looking at our vocabulary ratios and equivalent ratios. Our key concept, finding equivalent ratios, knowing that a ratio is a comparison. And here are three ways to write a ratio that compare the number of circles to the number of squares. The three and five are terms of the ratio. So you can see three red circles to five blue squares, three using the word two, five, three colon five, and three over five written as a fraction. So we can make, uh, part one, we can make a table of equivalent ratios. You can use the ratios to mix paint. To make one of the aquas that you're painting, you're going to use two drops of green paint for every three drops of blue paint. The ratio of green to blue is two to three. Since two to three and four to six show the same relationship between green paint and blue paint, they are equivalent ratios. So you can take a moment and read over the table. As you look at the drops of paint above each column, that's how many more are included in that column to make those drops of paint. So now we're gonna practice making a table of equivalent ratios. To make one of the purples in your painting, you're gonna use three drops of red for every four drops of blue. Complete the table to show ratios equivalent to three to four. You can draw pictures on paper to help. So if we look at the relationships that are going on here, this is the important part. If you look at the relationship between three and six, you want to have the same relationship between four and the number that goes underneath the six in that column, in that row. So if three times two is six, four times two is eight. Then you look at the relationship between the three and the nine. It is getting bigger, so you're gonna use multiplication. Three times three equals nine. So now we have to do four times three to equal 12. Then we look at the relationship between the three and the 12. Again, getting bigger. So three times multiplication shows that it's getting bigger. Three times four is 12. And then we do four times four to get 16. Always looking at those relationships and how they, they are looking at each other. When we think about ratios, we have to think about relationships. So you can practice this one. For an aqua in your painting, another aqua, you use six drops of green for every five drops of blue. Complete the table to show the ratios equivalent to six to five. You can draw pictures to help. So you're gonna take a moment and you're gonna fill this out. So you can pause the video and take some time and get it done. Okay, you can come back now and check your work. So. The relationship between the six and the 12 is, uh, the number is getting bigger, so it's multiplication. Six times two is 12, so we have to do five times two to equal 10. Then we look at the relationship between six and 18. Six times three is 18. Five times three is 15. We look at the relationship between the six and 24. Again, it's getting bigger, it's multiplication. Six times four is 24. Five times four is 20. Going on to part two, finding a missing term. An art supply store typically sells two bottles of yellow paint for every five bottles of red paint. How many bottles of yellow paint are sold when 20 bottles of red paint are sold? So we have to find the missing term in the second ratio so it's equivalent to the first ratio. So we have two to five and you look at these groups and for every two yellow, there are five red but we need to find out how many yellow there are for 20 red. So let's take a look. We have 20 bottles of red paint. There's our 20 bottles. How many bottles of yellow paint are there? Eight. The ratio eight to 20 is equivalent to the ratio eight to five. Eight bottles of yellow paint are sold when 20 bottles of red paint are sold. Okay, we're gonna go to the next one. Another art supply store typically sells seven bottles of yellow paint for every six bottles of red paint. How many bottles of red paint are sold when 21 bottles of yellow paint are sold? Draw chips, 
or we can draw pictures to find the missing term in the second ratio so it's equivalent to the first ratio. We can also put it in a table like I've shown you here. You can kind of look at that relationship. So if we look at the relationship between 7 and 21, it's getting bigger. So that says multiplication. 7 times what equals 21? 7 times 3 equals 21. So if we do it to the first part of the ratio, we do it to the second part of the ratio. We do six times three, that's representing the red paint, and six times three is 18, giving us the equivalent part of the ratio that was missing. For another purple in your painting, you use eight drops of red for every three drops of blue. If you use nine drops of blue, how many drops of red should you use? You can draw the pictures on paper to help, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull out my marker and I'm going to do eight drops of red for every three drops of blue. So here's my red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drops of red, three drops of blue. Okay. So this is one whole set right here. Okay, that's going to create one cup of the purple for your painting. But we don't have just this. We have nine drops of blue. So we have to adjust and we have to put, we have three drops of blue. One, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I have nine drops of blue, but I need to know how many drops of red I should use. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some more red, and I know for every three drops of blue, I have eight drops of red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can look at it now. And for every three drops of blue I have, I have eight drops of red. Okay. All together, I have nine drops of blue. How many drops of red do I have? Well, I have eight, 16, 24. So moving to our next part, you found the ratio three to four is equivalent to the ratio six to eight. So if we look at three to four and we're going to six to eight, it's getting bigger. So that's multiplication. If you multiply both terms, three to four by two, you get six to eight. So if we're going from six to eight to three to four, that's getting smaller. So that's division. And if you divide both terms of six to eight by two, you get three to four. So you can multiply or divide each term of a ratio by the same number except zero and get an equivalent ratio. So looking at this, you have a painting, it's 12 inches by 15 inches. So the ratio of the width to the length is 12 to 15. To scale it up or down, find two other ratios equivalent to 12 to 15. To scale it up, if we do 12 times 2, we get 24. So we have to do the same thing to 15. 15 times 2 is 30. If we're going to make it smaller, we're going to use division. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. Okay, now we're going to find two ratios equivalent to 4 to 10, one with lesser terms, one with greater terms. Okay, to finish up this part, we're going to find two ratios equivalent to 4 to 10, one with lesser terms, and one with greater terms. A little bit smaller on that. Okay. So I'm going to start with 4 to 10. And I want to go greater terms here. So greater means multiplication. If it's getting bigger, we're going to multiply. And I'm just going to pick a simple number. I'm going to multiply by 2. 
I like to use two and three because those are just small numbers. So four times two is eight. And 10 times two is 20. Okay, so I made an equivalent ratio here. Eight to 20 is equivalent to four to 10. Okay, now I'm gonna do another one. So I'm gonna start with four to 10 again, four to 10. I'm gonna make an equivalent ratio, but this time I'm gonna divide. So I'm gonna divide and both of them can be divided by two. So four divided by two is two and 10 divided by two is five. So now we need another equivalent ratio to four to 10, which is two to five with lesser terms. So eight to 20 has greater terms and four to 10, uh, two to five has lesser terms. In summary, we can create equivalent ratios by multiplying or dividing both parts of the ratio by the same number. Until next time, keep practicing and practice makes permanent.